Just notice the doubts. Notice you don't want to invest in the doubts. Acknowledge it. See how it has created your circumstances. It's a perfect mechanism. Appreciate the mechanism. Be grateful for the mechanism that's demonstrating negative experiences in your life. And in that acceptance and gratitude, flush it down the toilet. And in the very next moment, likely you will feel that connection again and things will flow differently. So clarity is king. Also in directing our universal energies and our unique soul energies and our calling energies into the specifics of this relative life of space and time and action. To allow that flow to occur, a state of clarity is king. Because a state of clarity means you're not you're not squeezing off your connection to God. But what is it that squeezes off that connection to God? And yes, it's a conviction, but it's a conviction in something that your soul does not believe in, that does not serve you to believe in. That's why it feels bad. That's why it feels constrictive. That's why there is no flow when you're in that state of that belief. So sometimes, not always, but sometimes, especially if you can get good at this sort of immediate shifting, calling yourself out on your bullshit, not making it personal, just like I'm done with it, just maturing to a point where you're done with it, then you're, what could help if you're sort of getting used to that is to talk to yourself in the mirror, look yourself in the eyes. It's very easy to fool yourself in believing in all your stories if nobody's looking you straight in the eye with like total presence. Now, if you're by yourself in your room, like the best thing to do that is, because typically regular people for lack of a better word, I'm just matrix indulged beautiful creators that have forgotten their beautiful creators, you know, average humans, <laughs> they will typically indulge your story and, and give you more of the same and so forth. So unless you're meeting with a mere being or a teacher that actually is anchored or a friend, it doesn't have to be a teacher, obviously, but a friend that is anchored in the presence of God and sort of the clarity you're going to be indulged in. You're not going to hear your own thoughts. It's just going to be on fucking repeat. And you believe in yourself. Like you know, everything you say sounds true to you. But if you look yourself in the eye, in the mirror, you see how full of shit you are. It's easier to see. So talk to your reflection in the mirror as if you're talking to a, a teacher or a mirror being or a friend that's anchored. And say the shit that you're thinking in the background. Make it visible. Pull it into the foreground. And don't shy away from what you're seeing. And then go. Once you feel like you kind of captured it all in those few minutes, you get a good sense of that package deal of your doubt, like everything that lives inside of that doubt bubble. And you take that whole bubble and you flush it down the drain. And then you're in a state of clarity because that's all that's left. Because that's your natural state. When you stop interfering with doubt, with wrong convictions, what is natural is a state of empowered clarity and alignment. And the only thing that could then pinch that off is if you make that special or you make that about you. Like, oh my God, now I'm in this state of flow and therefore I'm so incredible. Or this or that. And then you can be in a positive way pinching it off. It's not nearly as bad as pinching it off in a victimized way, but it's still pinching it off. It's still not letting more of that flow come through. But to be one with the flow means to have no stories about just to be in the flow state, just to be in that clarity, just to not put anything against it, not have any argument against it. That's all you really need to do is stop arguing with God, which includes arguing with the way things appear in your life, in the illusion. Stop arguing with it. First step, right? Acceptance. You could also, also call it that. When the acceptance is there, then it's easy to change it or let it be changed just by not continuing to, to feed that pipeline of the blockage, of the insistence, of the argument, of the story. And then you let clarity take a hold of you and guide you and flow you and move you without obstruction, without filter, without insanity.
And when you feel this negative thought come up, you go, it doesn't exist outside of yourself. Money does not exist apart from you. The opportunities in your life, the yeses, the noes, they don't exist apart from you. They're all self-created, self-curated. They're all reflective. They're all symbols. They're all feedback as to where you want to be, how aligned you are with who you truly are, how much of it you're letting through, and so forth. It's feedback. Don't judge the fuel gauge in your car. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I'm almost out of fuel, but I don't want to. I'm not going to look at it. Because when I look at it, I feel like the universe hates me because there's only 10% fuel left in my car. My car hates me. I'm separate from my car. My car and I are against each other. We're at odds with each other. I want to get from A to B, but my car doesn't want to go there with me. <laughs> and I'm not going to look at the fuel gauge. I'm just going to hope I get there and not look at my shit and not use the feedback mechanism of my own creation. I'm just going to continue to project that it's a car outside myself that I'm at odds with. And this car must not like me. No, look at the fuel gauge. Stop by a friend, get some gas, get some fuel in your tank, some inspiration, some realignment, and you're good to go. And suddenly the car works with you and you've got miles ahead of you before the next reflection is needed. But do not fear the reflection because it's feedback. Your creation is feedback. It's not against you. It's not, there's no other force. You're not cooperating with your higher self. Your higher self is not not cooperating with you. There's not an evil bone in your higher self. Victim, victim, self-identified victims who often don't identify as victims because that would make them feel like victims. So they ignore that fuel gauge too. But self-identified victims unaware of being victims or unwilling to admit that they're self-identified victims, they tend to, which is most of us, at least in some periods of our lives, right? <laughs> um, they, or we, in those states anyway, like to think that the universe is not working with us or that there's some higher self up there just, just having a, a blast hurting us. Oh, my higher self is just having fun like making sure everything in my life goes to shit must be because it's happening and I don't want it to happen. I'm not creating this. How could I? I'm such a good person. I do everything right. That's ignoring the fuel gauge. It's not using the feedback. It's not using the reflections of your own creation. Higher self is hurting when you're hurting. It never tries to hurt you. It's not aloof in that sense completely connected to you. it feels every little thing you feel and it's trying very hard to get your attention but you refuse because you have your own story set your own beliefs your own convictions so if you just flush that down the drain and in that emptiness in that willingness to be nothing to be clear your natural state begins to be able to reach you again you feel that sense of unity again and then if you don't freak out about that and turn that into a story of, okay, now I've conquered my demons for the rest of my life. Look how amazing I am. Because I guarantee you, you're going to crash again. Just keep it fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Just keep it cool. Keep it even. Even keeled. Not neutral. Not blend. Not like passionless. By all means, be passionate. But keep it even. Keep it Keep an equanimity. Keep it trust. Not this, not that. Not this, not that. Don't give it too much meaning. Just notice the doubts. Notice you don't want to invest in the doubts. Acknowledge it. See how it has created your circumstances. It's a perfect mechanism. Appreciate the mechanism. Be grateful for the mechanism that's demonstrating negative experiences in your life. And in that acceptance and gratitude, flush it down the toilet. And at the very next moment, likely you will feel that connection again and things will flow differently but you got to let it in <laughs>